on the other end of suffering. That's the real growth of life. What is enslaving you? What is controlling your thoughts? Is it weakness? A lack of discipline that prevents you from accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Get up and wake up. You have only one life, so don't waste it. A lot of us don't know of a whole nother world that exists. It's on the other side of suffering. Once you break these barriers that you have made for yourself, like the mind is the most powerful thing in the world. It is so amazing that I used to be a 300 pound guy and I thought that was it. Could barely read, could do anything. And now that what was inside that person was this guy that's in front of you today. That's how scary the mind is. And that's what I started realizing through this journey is that once I got a taste of, wow, man, I haven't even cracked. I haven't even begun to crack what the mind is capable of. And what I start realizing is on the other end of suffering, that's the real growth of life. Because you realize how the mind processes shit. And I talk about another thing called theory and practice. A lot of people are theorists. They, these smart guys that read these fucking books and shit, man, and they sit down and they tell you what the mind is supposed to do. And a lot of us listen to that shit. It becomes like, this is it, man. This, this old man who has been studying the mind forever, this is the cap that we have. By being a practitioner, I went out and realized a lot of these guys are so wrong, man. The mind has capabilities that are so unknown. And I found that through suffering. And there's a whole nother world on the other end of that. Our mind wants to protect us. The mind is like, honestly, it has a tactical advantage over us. It knows our deepest, darkest fears or insecurities. It knows where we start to feel, uh, we start getting that doubt creeping. It says, hey man, you know what, man? Maybe this isn't good. Let's go back home to the wife. Let's go back home to the kids. This is not comfortable. So in that moment, the mind directs us. It's a protective mechanism. It saves us for doing bodily harm or, or it really saves us from discovering that the mind's like, I want to be in charge of you. I don't want you to be in charge of me. So it tells you, let's just stop right here. But once you start breaking through that barrier, because we forget we are in control of our mind. We believe it's the other way around. No, we put in our minds what we should do. But we believe our mind is telling us, it's, it's giving us all this feedback. We have to reprogram it and tell us, no, 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 we're good. We're good, we got, it's, this sucks, but it's okay. I have so many conversations in my mind because so many times I want to quit. But this is what it is. This is what I figured out. I was so afraid of myself that I had to figure out I became a master of my mind. People, when you're afraid of something, you have to master it. That's how you start to overcome it. So what I realized, when I get to that point where I want to quit everybody, they get to the point where they want to quit. This is what happens. The mind tells you, let's go home. Let's take a warm shower. Let's get some food. This is not right. This is that. If you cannot answer the questions at that moment, because your mind's going to start giving you all these questions, all these questions. And if you can't answer them, you're going to quit. What I realized when I was going through Bud's Ranger School, all this 100 mile race, 200 mile races, pull up records. My mind would come creeping in. My mind said, look, brother, we've done all these other things. You've proven yourself. You're good. If I didn't have the answer to respond to my mind and say why I'm here, why I'm doing this, 
you will always lose that fight. You have to have the response to what your mind is gonna tell you. A lot of people think self-talk works. It does, but it doesn't work without the suffering before your mind starts saying we need self-talk. So what I tell myself is I go back to the months and years of preparation to get to that day. And I'm telling myself, the 3.30 in the morning, and I'm looking at my shoes, and I don't want to go out there and run 30 miles. I have to, in that second, in that moment of this self-talk, my mind saying, you got to find more, you got to find more. I once again calm down, go back into my mind, and I have to reflect back on the shit I did to get here. And that becomes my self-talk. Self-talk does not work unless it is real. Most of us lie to ourselves in the self-talk. It doesn't work. It has to be real. It has to be something that you've done to make it really work. There's a process that you have to go through and patience is the process. And if we don't have patience, after a week, I haven't lost 30 pounds, man, I'm done. I'm over it. So that's what I found out with people, man. They're not patient enough to realize and to enjoy the moment, not live in it, just enjoy it. There's no finish line in life, but enjoy that moment. Roger that, man, I lost five. Let me go 10 next week. They have the woe is me mentality. It's too hard. Life isn't fair. These things in life are, are, are not easy for me. You, you, you look to your left, you look to your right, and you start to judge yourself off other people. Like if you're a female, well, she's skinny, and she doesn't work out as hard as I do. And everything starts to corrupt your mind. You start to look around too much at other people and what they're doing, and that starts to corrupt your own dialogue. We are judging ourselves against too many fucking people. You have to judge yourself against yourself. This is a race against David Goggins and David Goggins alone. And once you can silence all that bullshit, all the outside interference and things that are attracting your mind to everything, you can then start to grow and realizing I'm stressed out for no reason. This is my own little race. This is my own timeline. And this is how I'm going to run it. Once you transform yourself and even though I'm still I'm not running from myself I'm constantly facing myself I'm constantly battling myself I'm not running from them anymore I used to but now I'm constantly battling them so now what happens is once you get to a point in your life where you're able to tell everybody how fucked up you are I will answer any question you want about me anything I did anything bad good ugly I will tell you when you get to that point in your life that's where your real journey begins and you no longer have to have a, a small victory to keep you going. You now realize what your purpose in life is. And you realize all oh, this shit's just part of it. But at first you need all these different tactics to keep you going because you haven't figured it out yet. Once you figure out that you're in a race amongst billions of people that live in this world, you're in a race by yourself. You have a purpose and it's your purpose, not everybody else's purpose. It is your purpose and only your purpose, and it's your race. So then you're like, hey man, I'm doing my thing. I'm doing the best of my ability. What's next? There's no longer these small increments to get through life. Because once you figure out why you're here, it just becomes a process. If you walk into any kind of event, whether it be physical or mental, if you walk in with already putting that block on your mind, if man, this ain't gonna happen. People go, how did you run 135 miles to death valley? And so, how did you run 100 miles with no training? Because I went into it not thinking, I can't do this, man. I went into it with a strategy. I had an open-mindedness. So until your mind is open to the possibilities that I can do this, you would never be able to do it once the mind starts to believe it can be achieved it then only then does it start to break down tactically how we can do this until then you're gonna always lose
You have to learn what do you want in your life? We have so much influence coming at us that we are so lost. We don't know what we want to do because we don't spend enough time with ourselves. You have to learn to shut off a phone, shut off a computer, shut off a TV. And it's okay to sit in a room by yourself in a chair and just think about you, where I want to be, where, where do I see myself tomorrow, the next year, the next year from that. And it takes a lot of self-discipline to be able to do that nowadays because you want to be so so attached to everything. You want to be so caught up with the world. The world's moving too fast. The world's moving so fast that you're trying to keep up to the point where you lose yourself in the world. So you have to take that time to go to that dark place in your mind and discover who you are.